everyone. In this video, we are going to look at how to work around the issue of sending approvals to shared email addresses in Power Automate because sending an, an approval to a shared email address simply does not work. And this has been an issue going back now a number of years. If you search in the Power Automate community, you're going to find various articles that ask about this issue. This one here goes back to 2019. And the, the thread is as recent as 2020, but you'll find other threads in here. And this thread even mentions that um, there are other community posts regarding this issue. So how can we resolve this? Most of the replies will mention just um, forcing you to send the approval to um, an individual as opposed to a shared uh, email address, but that is just not ideal. Um, other people that are in other departments that you're working with are not going to want to receive an email approval request to their personal email. They're going to want it to be done only through the department shared account. And the approval that we are talking about is this approvals here in Power Automate. And you can see that there are a few different options for approvals, but none of these will work with a department account. So you can do start and wait for an approval, for example. You can select your approval um, type. And of course, there's a, a few different options here as well. But again, all of them will fail with the department account. And so here is where we do the assign to. So in this case, I put in a department account into here. And then I need a title, just put test. And I can save this flow with these details and it saves no issue. So Power Automate is not gonna tell you that this doesn't work. But on the, on the other end, when you run the flow and you get that email and you click approve, you will see that error that we just looked at. So here's my solution for going, for working around this. Now, the first thing we can do is take a look at the approval email sent to a department account. And that is going to look like this when we use an approval action in Power Automate. And um, don't mind the, the HTML formatting here. The only thing we need to look at is there's a, an approve button and a reject button. And if I hit approve, I'm going to hit submit and then I'm going to see this fail to validate the signature. And so it's not going to do anything. Um, the same flow set up in the same exact way, but sent to an individual, it will work. So the way that we work around that is we actually use, instead of an approval action, we actually use um, a email action, which is send email with options. And send email with options gives us an email that looks like this. And there's an approve and reject button here that we built into that email. And if they approve it, then it, it can use the flow. The flow continues to run. Um, when the flow reaches this email action, it sends the email and it waits for the person to actually hit the approve or reject button before it continues. So it works very much in the same way that we want an approval to work. And you can send it to a department account without any issues. So I wanna jump into that and show you how that works. So we're going to actually modify an existing flow that I have rather than create a brand new flow because the current flow is set up to send a regular email asking someone to make an update and then reply to that email and say, hey, the update is complete. And I'm going to replace that with this email, which only requires them to make the update and then click the approve button, doesn't require them to reply. And it allows our flow to continue to run as opposed to the flow running completely, whether or not they've made the update or not, which is not something that I want it to do. So we have a flow. And what I'm going to replace is down here, I'm gonna replace this email. So before I just simply delete, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for the 
send an email with options. And here it is, it's the Office 365 Outlook action. And I'm gonna rename this. This is going to a sales operations department account. So we're gonna put that in there, but for testing purposes, we're using a different, we're using my own department account for testing this. And then I'm gonna borrow the language that I have built out in this original email. So I'm just gonna literally copy and paste so I can paste this into the body of the email. And then the subject, I'm also gonna change to the text that I had up here, paste that in there. And then for choices, I'm just gonna change this. It populates, this action populates with this choice one comma, choice two, et cetera. And so I'm gonna change it to either approve or reject. And that's also gonna require me to change the language in my email. So in this case, I'm going to say, Please update the account type and click the approve button below. Because as we saw, they put the buttons at the bottom of the email. And then if you are unable to update the account, please click reject. Please click the reject button below and notify us via, and this is a team's channel that I want them to email or that I want them to um, communicate to us through rather than replying to this email, which is what I'm trying, um, which, which is like, I'm trying to um, automate this completely and don't want to have to look in that email inbox for a, a reply. Um, in, in this particular case of this flow, um, the thing that we're working around here is uh, we want them to, uh, the flow will, the, the flow has a condition where it will um, check to see if an account type is incorrect. And it's a very rare occurrence that it is incorrect. So um, it's not often that this flow will have to send this email. In the case that it does, I don't want to check that inbox. So um, instructing them what to do if they have to reject. And then down here we have use only HTML message. So I'm gonna change this to ES. And then there's a Microsoft footer with some text about um, Power Automate and I'm gonna hide that. Um, so the way that I have this whole action set up right now, it will appear, the email when it sends, it will appear exactly like what you see here. So, um, and if you don't put anything, one thing I'll note here, if we bring this back to Power Automate and then we show um, the email here, you can see um, that this request for your input is a header text. So if you don't put anything in here, um, it shouldn't it shouldn't default um, to this. But you know we can test it and try it out. So you can have header text in here, and that's what this request for your input is. Or you can leave it empty. And by having approve reject, you will your um, email will appear like this. Select one of the options below to respond. So now that we have this action set up, we want to have a condition, a new condition. And the condition will be whether they check approve or whether they check uh, reject. So if, it's, if it approves, then it's going to create a case, which, would, which is what we have down here. So here's where we can add in our new action to check. And we're going to add in a condition. And then I'm going to rename this.
and this will be just be called sales ops approve. And here in our value, we are going to, to select the selected option for user response for from the previous action to send email with options, and then is equal to, and the text needs to match your button. So they select approve, then what will happen is the action that we put in here. And in this case, it's going to create a case. So I'm going to drag this action right into here. And if they click reject, which is means that it's not equal to, then the flow would run over here. So you can add more actions depending on if they click reject. In this case, for now, I'm not going to. So the flow, if they click reject, the flow will run and then it will end on this action, which means nothing further will happen in the flow. But if they do approve, they, they click approve, then this action here will run and it will create a case in Salesforce. Um, and it will populate with um, some details that I included up here in these actions. But that's gonna do it for this video. I hope that you found this useful. If you have other workarounds for this limit, this power automate limitation with approvals, using approvals, um, please let me know in the comments below. And as always, we will see you in that next video. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.